In this video, we're going to look at how to use AutoML, specifically Profit from Facebook, to do a lot of what we were doing in the previous videos completely automatically. Let's real quick take a look at the time series demand forecasting data set that we're going to use. This data set is hosted on Kaggle and I created it. It's essentially a simulation that looks at forecasting the demand of six restaurants in a beachfront setting. You've got time series data, natural language processing data, and computer vision data. Let's have a look at all three and this data set, I have a link to it in the description. This data set exhibits seasonality and trend both. So that's something that you have to be aware of as you're trying to forecast into the future. Seasonality is the fact that you're seeing this go up and down based on the month of the year. And if you zoom in further, you'll see that there's even seasonality by the week. Trend refers to that this whole thing is increasing gradually over time, especially if you look at the peaks. You have a bunch of different items that you are trying to forecast the sales for. And you've got historic data as it goes into the future. There you see a bit better kind of by week. You can see this product was clearly discontinued there, uh, but you, you need to forecast when a product discontinues. What, what is that going to do to the rest? Is it going to cause other ones to fill in the gap or will that demand simply go away? The files are here. The primary one that you're going to deal with is this one called sales train, which is your sales over time. You can see the dates here, the item, which are those items that we were just looking at, the price that it was sold for, and how many items it was sold for that day. These are all of the days, and the items are unique to each restaurant. You don't have multiple restaurants selling the same item. They're very similar across some of the restaurants. The actual items are here. You have some information about them. They're in tabular form. Each item is sold by a particular store or restaurant, store ID, and the restaurants are here. For natural language processing, I recommend doing something, maybe not with the restaurant names, because there's not that many of them, but the item names, you could certainly use natural language processing to maybe extract some further information. There's also computer vision, which are these pictures that were taken at the street where the five restaurants are at, showing the number of people there. So you could use something like Yellow or other deep learning packages, computer vision packages to count how many people. Both are on the beach and on the street because they, those tell you different things. Things. I did run a Kaggle competition with this data set and some of my students at WashU. You can see the root mean square errors that these teams were able to accomplish and some of their code is in the code tab. I'll also put a link to the Kaggle competition that I ran, Kaggle Community Competition. So the code is here on the Kaggle website that corresponds to the data set because I've uploaded it to Kaggle. You can run these right in Kaggle and that works really pretty well. Here I load in the CSV files just like before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all of the items together because Profit is set up so that it does not handle multiple items. So the 100 items that we have here, we would end up creating 100 different profit models to do that. But I'm just going to look at it this way uh, as all of the items sum together. So in aggregate, how many items are we selling? You could certainly break it apart and get profit trying to predict the individual items separately. So to make use of it, it's really very easy. You set a profit and then you fit the model to the data frame. And you're telling it which columns you are particularly interested in. So we're, we're going to be predicting the, the number of items by date. And you can then request that it make future predictions. To do that, you create a, da a future data frame. So an entire year into the future using their helper function there. And then you can display the, the predictions. It shows you the date that they're going that they're at in the future, and then the y hat. That's the prediction, and then the lower and upper. So kind of giving you a cone of, of uncertainty. And this is what it looks like. 
To the left, these are the three years of data that I gave you as training, and you can see it's it's figured out the seasonality. Uh, it's maybe figured out some of the trend that these two peaks look pretty pretty similar because as you can see, there is a trend in here. It's, it's increasing, especially if you look at the heights of those peaks. This one looks at the same level. So I'm, I'm not seeing that it's figured out the trend nearly as well. And then you can also look at sort of the cone of uncertainty. The further you get into the future, the less sure that it that it is. And it's detecting, it is detecting the weekly seasonality. So that's quite cool because it is detecting the Friday and Saturday. Overall, you tend to have more. And it's also detecting the yearly seasonality that in the summer, we tend to have more sales. So this is profit, which is getting a lot of traction in the Kaggle community. And it is Meta's attempt at providing AutoML for time series prediction. Certainly worth taking a look at. Thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more on the series, check out the playlist where I've done a number of presentations and videos on demand forecasting based on a two-day course that I put together earlier this year.